as the boy growing up in Terrell, Texas, Robert Denard never gave inventing much thought. I was interested in climbing trees and shooting birds with my BB gun and uh, taking the cat for a swim in the pond. <laughs> I really wasn't that involved in scientific things until I really came to IBM and they handed me a patent notebook and said, uh, put all your ideas in there. What remarkable things his notebooks would one day come to hold. I got interested in electrical engineering uh, really because uh, my guidance counselor at high school uh, said, oh, you're good in math and science. You, you want to go into engineering, that's a good thing. And uh, I pretty much had never heard of it, but uh, I bought a slide rule and went off to college. After attending Southern Methodist University, it was on to Carnegie Institute of Technology, now Carnegie Mellon, where he earned his doctorate in electrical engineering. Denard then found work at IBM in its research division. That was 46 years ago. I had the idea that I might come for a few years and learn, learn the tricks of the trade, but uh, things here are so much fun, I never thought about going anywhere else. The years at IBM have been extraordinary for Denard, for the company, and for the technology he's helped shape. In 1967, while working on the development of field effect transistors, Denard discovered a new kind of random access memory called Dynamic, or DRAM. It was a breakthrough that would, in a few short years, revolutionize the computer industry by making computer memory smaller, denser, cheaper, and requiring less power. Denard's breakthrough helped make possible the personal computer. Obviously, I, I knew it was going to be a big thing, but I didn't realize how much it, it would grow, you know, to, to have the really wide impact that it has today. The full impact of Denard's invention wasn't immediately apparent to everybody within IBM. I called up my boss and said, uh, wow, I've, you know, I've really developed the great new memory technology for the future. And he told me to take two aspirin and call him in the morning. By the late 1970s, Denard's DRAM was an integral part of almost all computers. Throughout the 70s, as DRAM replaced magnetic memory, Denard and his colleagues at IBM continued looking for ways to make computers smaller, denser, and cheaper. We found that if we reduced all of the dimensions of this device simultaneously in all three dimensions, that these much smaller transistors would really work. They would switch on and off cleanly, just like the, just like the bigger versions. And then we discovered there were several important advantages besides being much denser and therefore, you know, they should be very low cost, that they would, they would also operate faster uh, and, and directly in proportion to how small they became. Denard's theories of scaling were soon widely accepted and have helped drive the industry, enabling the portable age and making possible computer chips that control everything from laptops to graphics processors for games, digital TVs, and communication switching devices. The most important thing about uh, the inventive process is really the seeing the problem, understanding, and asking a question like, what if we did this? Why does it have to be this way? Isn't there a better way to do it? And then sometimes the invention itself is tr trivial after that. Not in Denard's case. His elegant ideas about memory and scaling have changed the computing world in fundamental ways. And while he has been recognized with many of engineering's highest honors, Robert Denard still remains humble about the impact his work has had. Sometimes when someone meets me in an elevator and said, oh, you were the one guy who invented DRAM. Uh, you know, it, it takes me aback a little bit. But I'm, I'm becoming a little bit more comfortable with, you know, the reality that, you know, the work that I've been involved with and, and many other people have been involved with for the last 35 or so years has really made a tremendous impact on, on the world in, you know, in just every conceivable way.